Good morning, everybody. It is a triumphant Tuesday here in the faith room. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We're choosing to rejoice and we are choosing to be glad in it. We miss y'all, but we're back today for another edition of the faith room. Come on in, everybody. I want to wish everyone a happy Tuesday. I want to say good morning to everybody. I'm declaring that today is triumphant, that we're overcoming any obstacle, any trap, any scheme, any hurdle uh, that the enemy would want to set before our lives. I'm decreeing and declaring that on today. So come on in, everybody. As we do every morning, we say good morning, we greet each other, and then we declare our day. Uh, it's a declaration. To decree is a command, to declare is to be specific and bold in what you in what you want to see in your life. So come on in, everybody. Good morning to you. Welcome to the faith room. Let's have a great time today as we go before the Lord. We are real people with real concerns. Good morning, y'all. But we're getting real solutions, all right? Real people, real concerns, but we're getting real solutions. All right. So let me do this very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and share this to my page and get as many people in as I can. Um, it's going to be a great time today, y'all. And so here we go on today. Uh, let me do this real quick. Let me get some folk up in here on today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all miss y'all miss the faith room that y'all that y'all miss uh, y'all. We had to chill and take a break on Friday and then on Monday, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King holiday. And so, uh, yeah, we had to do that. So uh, it's good to be back, though. It's good to be back in this space. It's good to be back in the room. So we thank God for everybody coming in today. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let me uh, go ahead and get some folk in here today. Uh, good morning. Come on in, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody, come on in here. Uh, let's go. Man, the Cowboys did it. Man, they did it, Rich. The Cowboys shocked the world yesterday because uh, I didn't think the Cowboys were, <laughs> I didn't think they were going to win last night. Uh, but they did it, Rich. Salute to the boys. They did it. They did it. Uh, so um, congratulations to all the Cowboy fans. Are y'all making some noise? Okay, there's one cowboy. That's Marilyn Jones. All right, Cowboys pulled it off. They beat the GOAT last night. I had a feeling, y'all, that Tom Brady was going to pull that win out last night. I, but he just I, – I, hey, Rich, for the first time, Rich, for the first time in that fourth quarter, maybe the third quarter, man, I just saw Brady just need to hang him up, Doc. His mobility, man, I, for the first time I could say that I just saw something just wasn't, uh, something just went clicking, man. Uh, yeah, so I hope that Brady, I hope that he give, I, I just hope he going to go ahead and retire. I mean, he has nothing else to prove. The go, He's the GOAT. I believe Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback. Me personally, Tom Brady is the greatest NFL quarterback of all time. Do y'all agree with that? Tom Brady, football fans, football fans. Do y'all agree that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time? Do y'all agree with that? I, I just need to see. Uh, yeah, they did it. Cowboys won it. it it's Tom Brady, the greatest of all time. I, I just want to see what y'all got to say about that. I want to see what y'all got to say about that. He is. Thank you. I agree. All right. He has nothing else to prove. Tom Brady has nothing else to prove. 
all right, to me. I, I mean, personally. So uh, I just, just how he was, and I was praying he didn't get hurt. Um, yeah, he ain't the same. But now last year, I could say at 44, he, you know, passing proficiency and accuracy, all that. I mean, he had it. But last night, <laughs> for the first time, what's up, Kirsten? I, I, I say, you know what? He needs to hang that thing on up. He needs to hang it up. So anyway, congratulations. I don't hate my team, the Falcons, ain't nowhere near a stadium right now. <laughs> so I, I salute. If your team is still playing, I salute. All right? Y'all know I'm a Georgia boy. Our Bulldogs, national champs. Our Falcons just... We'll see what we do in the draft this year. We'll see. But uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I can't. You know, if your team not playing, if your team at home fishing, vacationing, celebrate teams, <laughs> you know, who still pushing. Now, that 49er game, Cowboy fans, that 49er game, gonna, it's, that's going to be tight. That's going to be something. Um, so we'll see how it goes, man. Great, great, great. Anyway, y'all, come on in to the Faith Room. If you're here for the first time, welcome to the Faith Room. This is a daily platform. I'm the host, uh, Pastor Sheree Evans, our co-host, who will be in shortly. We come in. This is a faith environment. We have real conversations with real people, and we try to offer real solutions. Every week, it's topic-driven. Uh, it's comment-driven. And so if you're here for the first time, it won't be your last time. Uh, so if you're a first-timer, go ahead and type in the number one and let us know where you're watching from. I know I just tagged a few people who I met on the road. Um, I just tagged a few of them in. So hopefully they're in watching and checking us out. And uh, we want you to come in and uh, and grow and learn from this platform. Uh, that is our goal uh, here in the faith room. Okay. Uh, touchdown Tuesday. Toya, what up, girl? She said touchdown Tuesday. Come on in here, Toy. All right, let's go, let's go. Uh, here we go. All right, Bishop Davis, what's going on? Good morning, man. Good to see you, sir. All right, y'all, I see on Facebook Live, we have 100 on Facebook Live. If you're in YouTube, go ahead and like the... Um, um, the actual video on YouTube, subscribe, hit your notification bell so that when the faith room is live, you can be a part of that. So um, good. We're already over uh, 140 right now live on both platforms. Good morning. Pastor KJ, what's up, PKJ? Me, me, what's going on? Patricia Brown, good morning to you. Ramona, good morning. Hey, y'all, have you registered for the meetup, ATL? We're coming to Atlanta, Georgia. All right, y'all, we're on the clock now. We're on the clock. Get registered. Early registration. Get registered. All right, let's go. We got to do it. I want to see you in the ATL, y'all. It's going to be a great time. What's up, Ashlyn? For all of you who have registered, let's go. Get your room. Get your flight. Get your car gassed up, baby. Uh, that's it, TJ. Get registered. Tamika Jones uh, is leading our registration team. Um, and so, yeah, get going. Meet up. There it is, y'all. 2023, May 25th, 26th, and 27th. That's a Thursday through Saturday. Come on up in the ATL with us, y'all. If this is going to be your first one, uh, you will be blessed. What's the meetup? Y'all, we come together. We bring a online community together because we just, we have people watching from coast to coast. Let's go, Pearl. We have people watching from West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, Northwest, Northeast, the South. Uh, and so we're bringing everybody together. Uh, Thursday, we have a time of gathering. Uh, Thursday is more of a fun night. Friday, we do... Uh, what we call breakout sessions. The women will do the ladies room. The men will do the barbershop. And then you will have other 
sessions you can choose to be a part of. Uh, and then Friday night, we come back for what we call Faith Room Live. So we're going to actually do a live faith room in person with guests. And then, of course, you go chill. Saturday morning, we get up 9 a.m. We show up for worship. And then Dr. E. Dewey Smith, my spiritual father in the ministry, he will bring a word to close out Meetup 2023. All right. And uh, we want you to be a part of it, guys. I love you. For everybody who supports the Faith Room, man, Sheree and I appreciate you from the bottom of our heart. All right? That's that. All right? There's the host, co-host. What up, hey. though? Good morning. Sheree, I feel rested. Like, I'm trying not to be hyper this morning, but I just, that Friday and Monday oh, was a blessing. It was so in order. Come on. So in order. You get no pushback from me. You didn't argue. You didn't say well. We never will. You didn't say well. We need to go live. I say they'll be okay. And you texted me yesterday. It was sixty-eight degrees in Little Rock. Yeah, and I that think it's gonna be that again good. today. And then the the temperatures are gonna drop again <clears throat> tomorrow. More rain tomorrow. Sheree, so, I almost froze. I almost, listen to me. Say, you know, I was sick. I was sick. I didn't. When did you? So when did you get okay? When I got on the plane coming back home, I started feeling better. You know, I showed you all that medicine and, yes. and vitamin C and all this stuff I was taking. My body went in shock when I got off that plane and hit that Arkansas mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. And see, that happens to me when I come to the West Coast. <clears throat> Listen, Cherie, it was cold. Yeah, it was. Now, you did come on a very cold weekend. Yeah. So. Uh, sun was shining, anyway. but it, was, it wasn't helping. Chris Turner, what's up? Man, I take Cherie. I'm not. I don't. And then I try to go get a medicine ball. They ain't got no peppermint. Oh, we don't want it. Did you take it? Because that, no, we don't need it then. I guess it was a low shipment. I went to two Starbucks. And neither one of them had? We ain't got no peppermint, sir. Well, well give me a white chocolate mocha. We ain't got that, no white. Well, no, that, that wasn't going to help. That's going to create mucus. I know but, it. Um, so I keep peppermint oil on me at all times. I need to get some of that. You just, just, you just put drops on your tongue? Throat. Just Okay, I got you. Don't do too much. <laughs> Don't do too much. What, what What's the... It's going to be on fire. And you're gonna be singing soprano. This throat is on fire. <laughs> Come on, Sheree. This Ooh. throat is on fire. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so, Sheree. Yeah, normally I do that before I preach or sing just some drops, but then I put it in my um in my medicine ball as well. Okay, cool. Or or when I make tea at home. It just opens you up. I got you. Mm -hmm. I saw you celebrated daddy birthday. Yes. He wanted 80, a dad's 80, what? 80, 85. 85. Yes, yes, yes. Happy birthday to Cherie's daddy. Yes, indeed. Y'all had a game night, I saw something like that. We had game night with I had game night with my some of my other cousins later that evening. So yeah. It was a fun-filled weekend. I'm glad you're not in jail. I saw your text. Thank God for next week's show. <laughs> that was the Holy Spirit because I, the Lord downloaded that subject. You were like, no, let's let's wait. No, let's let me tell you what my pastor preached Sunday. Making mad work. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was like, so Lord, you just going to come get me like that? I need it. Making mad work. John chapter 11. Check it out. Yeah. So we, oh, I'll just wait to tell them the show next week. Everybody need to be here next week because we, uh, <sighs> we're going to help everybody stay out of trouble, yes. stay out of jail and stop going off on people. But anyway, that's the inside for me and Sheree. So. Yes, peppermint oil. Peppermint like oil. Oils, peppermint. All inspiring singers, peppermint oil. Or preachers. Or preachers. Or anybody who has to talk all the time. 
You need it. Peppermint oil. All right. <clears throat> so, Ree, how many live do we have, sis? We're 181. Let me do my part. 181. Let's go on and get to 200, y'all. We'll start. Everybody saying happy birthday to your daddy. Yes. Happy I showed him all the... I know he's watching right now. And, sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> happy birthday, dad. We love you. Give us, give us a thumbs up, Dad, if you're in the room. <laughs> Hello, Tria. Yeah. If, if you you gonna fall out if you do a thumbs up. I promise. I would. Yeah. Like right on camera, I fall out this chair. <clears throat> All right, Bridget okay. McCullough. <clears throat> say her dad would have been 88 today. Today, okay. Happy heavenly birthday Happy to your dad. Birthday. You okay, know I what? If you if you making it past 70 years these days, 60. 60, shoot. Man, because people leaving here. Cherie, I was watching the news yesterday, ESPN yesterday. Mm -hmm. And a Georgia standout offensive lineman was killed in a car. You saw that? Was killed no. in a car accident. And one of the recruiting trainers, she was killed. She was actually driving the SUV. And then two other people were severely injured. They were leaving a party, going back to the campus or whatever, and they ran into a pole and tree and died. What, like, why did they run into a pole? I mean, it's still on the investigation. Oh. But, but he was a he he's a he was a top NFL prospect starting starting offensive lineman for the Georgia Bulldogs. Somebody say, I saw I saw that last night. Horrible tragedy. 20 years old. A baby. Yep. And he started, he was a starter this year for the team. So, I mean, he just won the national championship. Uh, so, I don't know if the other two passengers in the back died, but they were all, it was four people in the, in the, in the expedition. And that's how quickly y'all, Life can be over. And that's why I tell you, Cherie tells you, cherish every moment. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Cherish every moment of your life. Because it matters. And that's not doom and gloom, y'all. That's life. That's reality. What's going on around us? What about those planes? <clears throat> Two planes almost collided on the runway. Then a plane did crash, I think. And, they, and some people died. People died. The young man who travels with me, we were on separate flights. So he flew in Sunday night earlier than me. And that was heavy rain in San Diego. So he shows me a video of them landing the plane, it hydroplanes, and it had to go back up in the air. So he got a video, ah, oh Lord, help. I mean, so they go back up in the air, they circle for a while, and then they finally land it. And I'm like, dude, why you send me this before I take off? Bad so I'm, driving, I'm, baby. I'm asking the stewardess, so is the runway in, in San Diego clear? I, what you talking about, sir? No. So they don't even know. I said, never mind. Y'all need to get- you got, you got live footage, like- Get that moment. doggone car out there and move that water off that runway. Whatever y'all use, tractor, whatever. Look, squeeze a squeeze, whatever y'all got to do. Oh, have mercy! But yeah, two, two, two nearly plane crashes. Yeah, and and Pearl just put this up. A thirty-year-old police officer out this way goes to a domestic violence call, Cherie. And the man kills him. Two kids and a baby on the way. Do you hear me? Wow, wow, wow. So y'all, listen. Take life I serious. Yeah. Take life serious. It's, it's, um... Well, I think I seem like somebody posted that. Yeah, it's kind of running wild out here as far as that story goes. Okay. They did a GoFundMe for him. And uh, in fact, the pastor, I'm preaching in, in that area Sunday evening. 
in Marietta, the pastor I'm preaching for, he he actually was a part of his church for many years. So he was very, I, t I talked with him last night. So he was still devastated. Mm -hmm. No doubt. 30 years old. Yep. So anyway. All right, let's move to something else. Let's go. Let's go to question of the day. And um, y'all keep tagging, keep sharing. Let's pray. In fact, let me just whisper a prayer for those families right. who were here. Father, I love you. Thank you that even now we can pause and, and mention those who are in grief right now, who are in pain right now, who are dealing with tragedy right now. God, I pray for the UGA family. I pray, God, for those plane incidents uh, that happened, one crash. God, I pray for everybody who's dealing with uh, tragedy in their lives right now, death in their lives, whether it's physical, uh, uh, whether it was crime. God, I just pray you would touch, be a peacemaker. God, we thank you that we can pray for each other. We thank you that this platform is not a selfish platform. God, yes. we believe in lifting others up. Thank you for this great session today. We thank believe you. for your presence to be in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen. All right, y'all. All right. And I think we missed some birthdays. I think we had some birthdays while we were gone. But happy birthday to everybody's birthday. Happy birthday, y'all. I saw y'all posting. Jan, was Jan one? Chapman. Uh, Jan Julie. celebrated a birthday Sunday. Julie. Julie Lanton. Gant. Julie Lanton. Don't Lanton. Don't now don't make Terry come get you. My bad. My bad. They're right. She's married now. Roxy turned 53 yesterday. 53, Roxy. Okay. 53. I didn't know I knew so many January babies. Yeah, they up in here. Okay. All right, let me get myself together. Let me get my stuff <clears throat> in order and in line. Tag and share, y'all. Let's go. Great We're discussion. 208. 208. 208 are live right now, both platforms. Right now. Let's go, y'all. Get them up in here. Here we go. Yo, Faith Room, what's my name? this room on a fun note here we go would you rather go to a water park or an amusement park for fun which is more fun to you water park or an amusement park mm. let's see <clears throat> take me to the water park you want the water park want that slide I'm going to the amusement park okay there's, okay, let's see. Water park, amusement, 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 water. All right. Water. Ooh, they're going fast. Amusement, 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 water, water, amusement, 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 water, amusement, 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 amusement. Wow. Amusement, 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 amusement. Amusement. The water park is more relaxing to me. Amusement. 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 Look at this. Park. I don't play with roller coasters. <laughs> amusement. Water park. Amusement. Water park. Amusement. Amusement. 
I almost died on one of those slides. Amusement. <laughs> Who said that? Water park. Tamika Moore. Wow. Water park. Water park. Amusement. Water. Amusement. Amusement. Water. Amusement. Amusement. Can't swim. Amusement. I can't swim. Amusement. Amusement. Uh, amusement. Looks like amusement park. Yeah, and, and I'm going to say this, y'all. You do know the water at the water park ain't with four feet. So y'all ain't got to worry about, you know, but some people. Don't I don't worry. know that you could die in the bathroom. Yeah, I know. But I'm at that slide. I like them little rafts. Shoo, water, shoo. water. Water. But the food at the amusement park is way better. For sure. Water, water, water. Stay down at the bottom, somebody said. I guess that's at the water park. Water park. All right. So we got the water. Yeah, we ain't but a few of us at the water park. So at least we ain't got no long lines. <laughs> yeah, you ain't got to worry about me. Listen, I'm telling you. Mm -mm. All right. So yeah, that was a great question. Somebody said a tablespoon of water. And you can drown in a tablespoon full of water if it oh, goes in the old room. What's going on, y'all? All right, listen. Um, I want to ask again before we start. Any first timers today? Uh, Vanessa, I can't get my hair wet. Uh huh. Uh, any first timers today? Type in the number one for us and let us know right next to that what city you're watching from. We just want to make sure we didn't miss anybody. So, uh, what's the name said the same thing? I pay too much money. I will not get my hair wet. Jan. Jan be having that hair on point too, boy. Yeah. Birthday girl. I might see her. Yeah. Queen Macintosh. I would say water, but I hear that uh, the waves at the water park will snatch your wig off. Okay. We got a first timer thing. I want to shout out Queen Jewel Macintosh. She sent me some Crocs with the things. Shut the door. <laughs> she did. First Queen. timer. Yeah, I uh, came, I was getting ready to leave one morning and there was a package at my door. Wow. Oh, wow. okay. San Diego, welcome Yvette Wade. Then we have another one from Little Rock, Christy Williams. Uh -huh. Christy, you've been in here before. Uh, ATL, first time. Yeah. Regina What's Washington. What's up, G? Good to have you in. You're welcome. GG. All right. Welcome to all the first timers. We are so excited that you're in the room with us today. And I'll say it all the time. You'll be back. Tell them a little bit about the show, Cherie, in your, in your own words. What can they expect from the faith room for the first time? From the, this whole platform, the platform is, I mean, we say I, this is kind of like our mantra. We are real people who have real concerns and we come in here to get real solutions. Right. <clears throat> we are not, uh, though we are faith based. Hence our name, the Faith Room. Um, we do we do undergird what we talk about with the Word of God, but we're not like God. We ain't got no shovel, you know, trying to shovel it down your throat. We, we're we're talking like we're in the living room. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. Everybody get just find a spot in the living room. Somebody on the couch. Somebody on the on the arm of the couch. Somebody in the love seat. Somebody on the floor eating a bowl of cereal. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Coffee. This is the feel. This is the vibe in this room. And so many people have found it to be a safe space. Um, right. So I, I think you'll enjoy today and in, in, in so much that you'll come back again. Absolutely. And we are comment driven. Um, comments. Your, your, comments, your comments, comments matter in the faith room. So, yeah. And we're also over on YouTube, just in case you ever want to switch it up, watch it on your TV or whatever. We're over there too. So absolutely. All right. Listen, y'all, we're going to move with our conversation. If you're here for the first time, the first half of the show, we deal with something light, fun, question of the day. That music you heard, everybody dancing, that's like a must in the faith room. If we don't do the question of the day, the session don't even go right. <laughs> so we open up with a question of the day. We laugh, we talk about current events, news, etc. And then we get into the faith-based side of this. And we share topics every single week. This okay. year, 
Go ahead, Sheree. What you got? So, I don't want nobody to feel slighted. So Rose Coleman said that Christy is new to the faith room. Um, she would just come in after the fact, so she asked her to verify. I know I've seen her in here. Yes. Uh, and she was commenting uh, the other day when Pastor Jermaine. But, so she's from Little Rock, so y'all make her feel welcome again as well. So we got San Diego, Little Rock, and Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta wow. GA. All right. Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Listen, we are in a theme this year. We themed the entire year in the faith room. The theme is no compromise. The year of no compromise. We've discussed compromise, what it means. So y'all remember, that means we're not going to what? Lower our standards. Right. Lower our standards to do things that go against what we what's want. best for me. Mm -hmm. All right? And again, we can't judge people's standard because everybody's different. But you right. know that there have been years you let your guard down, mm -hmm. you let your standard down, to please appease other people yep. and to move into areas that you really didn't want to move in because you're non-confrontational. You just go along to get along yet. You're missing out on your purpose and what you want to do. This is the year and Sheree introduced this word and I love it to be self full. Yes. Selfish. You know, you, you've been deemed as selfish because You've set boundaries in your life and you learn how to say no. And people call you selfish. You ain't acting the same. Can't nobody get nothing from you no more. No, I'm not being selfish, but I'm being self full of me. Correct. And Sheree, this is a good year to say, you know what? As, as short as life is and things happening, I need to take care of me. Yeah. I need to do what's best for me. So that's the thing for 2023. And I hope that it's already been a blessing to your life. Um, and so we started this whole series off, Sheree, about mastering our mind. Mm -hmm. Compromise starts in the mind. Yeah. Whatever captures your mind will capture you. Whatever gets in your head will get in your life. Come on, come on. And a lot of times, y'all, we need to have renewed minds. We need to change our mindset. All right. Mm -hmm. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind. We got to think right. different, y'all. Right. And when you think different, Cherie, I believe you move different. Absolutely. What did I, I say? Here. My life follows my thoughts. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's good. My life follows my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully you've been thinking better. You've been thinking on those things that are going to be beneficial, again, to your selfishness, yeah. to your life. This week, Sheree, I'm ready for this. Come on. Um, because we're going to be talking about mastering our priorities. Mm -hmm. Somebody type that in. Priorities. Y'all type that in. Priorities. That's good. Priorities. Yeah. Type that in real fast. Priority. Last week, mastering our mind. Right. This week, we're going to talk about mastering our priorities. All right. And Sheree, I want us to, I want us to deal with this. Let me pull up <clears throat> our, uh, our, our notes as we, uh, as we look at this today. Um, <clears throat> priorities, type it in, priorities. I don't know why I'm going to throw, I need some peppermint oil now, Sheree. Right now. So Sheree, when you hear priorities, sis, what's com what comes to your mind when you hear priorities? Priorities. Cause I can't. You got to reset um, my notes. Cause I don't even see mine no more. I done deleted all my notes. My God. Thank okay. You. Go ahead. <laughs> hey. Okay. Hallelujah. When I hear when I hear the word priority, it's like what needs to get done. That what's the thing that <clears throat> needs to happen, or what needs to get done? What's most important? Importance. Yeah. And I think for me, we find ourselves frustrated, y'all, and overwhelmed because we feel unfulfilled. How many of you have been there? Frustrated, overwhelmed, you feel unfulfilled. Here's why, y'all. Because we've not achieved our goals. Mm -hmm. Okay? Have you ever been there? You look at the end of your life, you look at the end of the year, you look at the end of the month, and, and yet again, there's frustration 
your 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 thoughts are scattered because we are still not meeting our goals. Yeah. In a certain period of time. Now I'm, I'm going to be honest with with myself because this could be due to a lack of time, right? Not enough time. It could be due to a lack of money. Correct. Cherie, it could be due to a lack of support because I have a lot of goals that I need people to help me with and everybody too busy trying to do their thing. Nobody is helping me. Nobody is supporting me. So it could be due, due to a lack of support, but it could be. Come on. Because of compromise. Woo, Pastor Nate. Say it again. Yeah, it could be time, could be money, could be lack of support. But you know, a lot of times, Cherie, we don't reach our goals we don't get to where we need to be because we lower our standard in that little bit of moment, that little, that little yeah. moment of lowering our standard, and we go unfulfilled. My Lord. How about that, Faith Room? <laughs> Have you been there? Come on. What are you still waiting to accomplish that should have been accomplished a long time ago? But what you do, it's almost like Nehemiah when they were trying to build the wall mm -hmm. and the enemy kept picking on them. And it's Nehemiah right. said these words, we can't come down. I'm doing a great work. Come on here, Cherie. I'm doing a great work. And, and I hear the noise. I hear what's going on around me. I see it. But you know what? This is not going to happen. I got to finish fulfilling my purpose. Yeah. Oh, Cherie, I have a question. How many of you have come off the ladder of your purpose and your destiny listening to noise. Wow. Coming down off your ladder of destiny and purpose, trying to help somebody else. Huh? Come on. I want it. I want you to think today. I want you to think today. Because some of you, 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 you have you have wasted too much time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because of compromise. So we're gonna talk about priorities today, Sheree. And, and I want to start here, y'all, because I, please, and I said it at the top of the show, life is short. Yeah. And some of us, we're playing with the time we have. We're playing with it. We we assume that we're going to be here until we're wow. 90, until we're wow. 100. Wow. Somebody told me the other day, and, and they and I understood what they were saying. Yeah, my 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 grandparents lived till they were 104, and my uncle died when he was 99. So I know I'm gonna live a long time. You don't know that. I don't know that. It's in our bloodline to live a long time. No, no. Listen, Sheree, why is this important? Because we play with time. We we God gives us time that we don't always allocate and use properly. And that's one thing you cannot get back. We can. That's that's yeah, and I think I, and I can't remember what the quote was. It was speaking to procrastination, but that's that's us being arrogant with God to the, to say that He owes us time to do tomorrow what He told us to do today. Come on, how, Sheree. how arrogant can you be? Come on, Sheree. <clears throat> so you don't know you don't know what time you have left. To get what you need to get done accomplished, so it would behoove us to put things in proper order, um, so that we can complete the assignment, complete the task at hand. And let's not just talk about death. Let's talk about. For me, it's been window of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. There, there are opportunities, windows that can close on us. Come on. Because we don't take the, we don't take the time. We don't use that time. To prepare ourselves. No. Listen, y'all. Some windows will close on you. Mm -hmm. God has laid a runway for you to take off. And you think that runway is going to be wide open. But y'all, listen to me. If we don't properly steward our time. Come on. You can see opportunity. How many of you can raise your hand and say, that there's been some opportunity that closed on you because you procrastinated? I kept getting distracted. Come on, that's it. Piddle paddling with stuff that ain't got no significance, really. And that's why we say, Sheree, if we could go back and if we can turn back the hand of time, we would do this or do that because opportunities, y'all, will close on you. Yeah. 
will close on your family. So you talk about business. You talk about, you know, you want to travel more. You talk about all this stuff you want to do. And you think that that opportunity is going to always, no, it won't. Nope. It won't. And what you don't, listen, let me say this. What, <clears throat> there are people, I believe, Cherie, who would roll over 1,500 times to be in the position that we're in. Not talking about our job position, but to be postured for greater. Yeah. And yeah. some of us are in great positions. You have the education, you have the support, you have the mindset, but you are compromising priorities. That's it. Season. So quit playing with time. And so here's what I want you to know, first of all, today, all right? And, and tomorrow we're going to deal with a biblical narrative that kind of deals with priority and all of that. Today, we're just setting it up. Here's the first thing I want y'all to know. All of us have purpose. Mm -hmm. Let me say this to everybody. When God created you from the foundation of the earth, you can go all the way back to Jeremiah. Before Jeremiah came out of his mother's womb, the Bible says in Jeremiah 1.5 that God had already ordained him to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. That is good teaching, y'all, that even as we are being formed in the belly, God put purpose on us. Yes. Hear that, Sharif. Regardless of who pushes me when I get out of the womb and who tells me I can do it when I get out of the womb, if they never say it, I'm already full of purpose. Yes. Absolutely. From, Faith from, room. from the beginning. From the beginning. Cherie, that's important to know when you talk about priorities, that mm -hmm. God created me to do something. Yes. And I'm tired of going through the motion, Faith Room. He ain't create me to be miserable every day now mm -mm. and to be depressed every day. Your life don't consist of, let me get up, let me go to work, let me get these kids ready for school, let me go on out here and do this job, let me come home and do the same routine, let me get my wine, let me light my candle, let me soak in the tub and start over again. No, your purpose is bigger than that. Cherie, you want to talk about purpose and why it's important? Well, More I think it's important purpose. so you just don't live life haphazardly, just doing any and everything. That Because if you don't know, purpose establishes direction. That's so, it. And so... If you don't know what your purpose is, um, and, and I think sometimes we, we try to jump to the overall or the big, what's my purpose in the world? But sometimes you need to ask God, what's my purpose in this season? What is my purpose in this Come moment? On. And so master that, and then that'll kind of help you guide because your priorities are going to change. As, as life happens, your priorities are going to change based on your purpose in that moment, in Come that on, season. Please. Come on. And so it behooves us to um, spend time with God so that we can know. And um, yeah, I, I just think knowing your purpose establishes like a map so that you'll know what to put in place. That's good. <clears throat> There's a scripture in Ephesians 2 verse 10, y'all. And it speaks of us being God's handiwork. For we are God's, I'm going to say this. We are God's masterpiece. Mm -hmm. What's a masterpiece, Sheree? What's a masterpiece? His own exclusive. Uh, Come on, Sheree. Own, it's like it can't be duplicated. This came from me. Very well thought out, methodical, strategic. Everything placed where I wanted it to be placed. DJ Sheree, human jukebox. I found a masterpiece in you hey work but it's true <laughs> and i treasure I you about that song. my love that's a love song god says yeah. when i created you i found a masterpiece in you yeah yeah let me tell this to everybody who done bump your head, who done made mistakes in your life. You feel horrible about your past. Let me tell you something, man. You still are a masterpiece. A masterpiece. 
How he created you. Because all God will do is take you down to the potter's house, put you on the wheel, and right. mend you back to where you need to be. God don't throw us away. God mends yeah. us, molds us, and makes us better. Yes. Make me over again. He don't, listen, y'all, you are a masterpiece. Ain't another one like you. You from the hood, but you're a masterpiece. Single parent, but you're a masterpiece. That's been from pillar to post, but you're a masterpiece. Come on. I feel like I, I feel like putting that out in the air because some of y'all feel like you don't have purpose in your life. So notice what he says, y'all. Ephesians 2:10. When I created you, you are a masterpiece. He listen, he has created us anew in Christ mm -hmm. so we can do the good things. For us, we and Cherie. Long ago. Before you, your mama met your daddy, you were on the mind of God. Come on, Cherie Evans. And he already had our, our path and our destiny. It's already been determined. And so that's why he created me like he created me, you like he created you. It's strategic. I'm, I, I mean, when you think of a masterpiece, it's like the thought and the time put into it. Because I want it to be this way. Come on, Sheree. And then, so when we alter and try to be like somebody else, what are you saying? What are you saying to an artist? It's just like, like you go into an art museum or, or uh, where they sell exclusive art, and then you, you go get your own paintbrush and you start trying to add stuff on it. That was not supposed to be there. That was not in the mind of the artist. Come on here, Cherie. And so now you putting stuff on there that's not big in your mind is making it better, but that's that was not on the mind of the artist. So when we try to walk and and talk and and be just like somebody else or steal other people's ideas and stuff that God gave somebody else, do he didn't tell you to do that? That's Come why on. it's not going to be. You won't have the success of that person. You know why? Because that wasn't your vision. That was not an etched in your purpose. And so when we do those things. It's a slap in the face of the artist. That's so good, Cherie. Be who he created you to be the masterpiece he created you to be. Walk in your purpose. So that you can do the good things he planned for you to do. I want to ask this question. That is some good, that's some good content, Cherie. Do we know our purpose? Come on. Do you know, have you identified, this is a great question, y'all. Have you identified the good things that God has established for you to do? Because mm -hmm. you know, Cherie, compromise really is fed when we're walking in no purpose. Say that again. We feed compromise. Yes. When we're not walking in purpose, come on, because I ain't got I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know where I'm going. going. It's just out of here. Put up Rich comment. I saw something. I'm gonna read okay. the pastor comments. And uh and I want to see this this answer. He said sometime, let me see. Uh Rich, I just saw it and I want to read it. Okay. Some artwork doesn't seem to look like much. The artist Jackson uh is at Pollock's art. Work mm -hmm. looks like paint thrown on a canvas, but it's worth millions. Mm -hmm. Someone might not think much of you. Oh, God. But you are a masterpiece. I might not look like very much. But I am a masterpiece. Come on. Your vet said one me, one you. One lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, Anita Edwards said, Pastor Nate, I was going to say, what if some don't know their purpose and some run from their purpose because it's uncomfortable. That's what the question is. Do you know your purpose? Like I believe Sheree in, in my life now, I know why God created me. God created me to, to, to love people, to help the least lost and left out. I, I feel like there's an oil on my life for the, for the, the gutter most. Let me say that's me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For, for those who are underdogs. I am pro-underdogs. I'm pro 
encouraging people. I believe I'm an exhorter. I believe God created me, Sheree, to push people into their purpose. I, be, I know that. Mm -hmm. I don't get jealous when people elevate. I don't get jealous when people come up. I don't get oh. jealous when my friends elevate in life and ministry and career because that's what I've been designed to do, to help people become better. That's good. What, what you were going to say about you? No, I'm just, you're saying you don't get jealous of other people because you're working your lane. And so while God is elevating them, that's because they're working their lane. Why would I get jealous? It ain't got nothing to do. That has nothing to do with what I'm over here doing. Come on. You know what I'm saying? That's absolutely true. And so I, I, I need to celebrate because if I keep moving and then everybody's acceleration ain't the same, it won't be at the same rate because again, our paths, though we do similar things, we're masterpiece. So there's some some things different about us. And there's some, some differences in our past. That's good. I know I'm a teacher. I know yes. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pusher. I'm a, but I'm going to teach you. Then I'm going to push you to go at an accelerated pace. Come on. And then, so I'm not, I know I'm not the rub your bag, rub your hand. I'm not, I'm not her. Come on, baby. Come on. I'm not her. So I, I that's another phase. So you got to go through that before you get to me most times. When you get to me, it's time to roll. Let's go. It's go time. I understand that. Come on. You know your purpose. I know my purpose. Okay. And so I'm not going to get jealous of somebody who's doing something else. We're all in the kingdom. We're, we're representing and we're strengthening the kingdom of God. But we have different, just like in you talked about in the book of Nehemiah. Remember when he went. He assigned every family a specific thing to do. Come on. Come so on. That, but at the end of the day, it was all to get this wall back up. Come on, Sheree. Protect this city. So I can't get mad if I if, if he got me over on the east side and then Nate them over there on the south side. I want to be over there. And I want no, that's not your area. Work yours, and then it'll all come together. And so that's the, I think that's the mindset we ought to have, but you got to know where you, well, you know that, you know, now, okay, I'm waking up in purpose. I'm waking up knowing the good thing God created for me. So when you're, cre and we're going to talk, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay. I want to ask though, do you know your purpose? Somebody say, why would I get jealous? Stay in your lane. I see all the comments coming in. Uh, Tracy said, why would I get jealous? Your lane is your lane and mine is mine. Let's celebrate each other. That's Absolutely. it. Push each other. Push. Because here's the thing I know, y'all. Unless she just act brand new, ain't no way Cherie gonna be blessed and come up and not remember her her friend, Nate. Because I think it all goes together. Come on. So listen, so holding you down, though, is what I'm saying. Holding you down is holding me holding down. Holding me down. Because if Cherie, them eight tickets she bought for this, mega, I'm sorry, yeah. Now, them eight tickets. If she would have hit that one point three billion, I would have got at least at least a million dollars. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you See, that's why you ticket. can't. You that's why you ticket. can't. That's why you. What I'm saying, y'all, is and, it's your, and I don't know what Sheree bought. I've, I've oh, been oh. messy, but when when we push people to come up, some folk will, rem will remember you. Oh yeah. Yeah, they will remember you. But also, Nate, even even to that point, it doesn't it's not it's counterproductive for me to be jealous of what you are doing, because if I'm if, while I'm being jealous while and I'm not doing what I'm doing, I'm holding up the progress. Because we're all connected. Oh, that's good. Yes. And so now I'm I'm holding somebody up from moving to their next place because they waiting on me. If I'm the teacher, they're waiting on I'm, I can't be over here jealous at uh, the prophet. Come on. So they're waiting on me to do my part to push them to their next place. That's good. But if we over here struggling and tugging and fighting and having power struggles, we're holding up other people's destiny. Holding up the progress. And guess what? We're gonna have to stand before God for that. That's so we good. will give an account. Stop for us every life going. you jacked up. Don Burr say jealousy is purposed to delay us. Big bro, that's good. That's what it, jealousy has a purpose. That's good, Burr. 
That's real good. KJ say he hear you, Elder. Her voice changing on us, KJ. Ah! Real. Let me calm down. No, I hear you. I want. You. <laughs> so here's what we're. Why? Why did we start here? Come because on. folks who are typically just kind of all over the place and scattered, they have no agenda. They have no priorities. Come on. They're just going through the motion. And so they're stopping doing every other thing than fulfilling that good thing and wonder why their lives can't get can't get any further, can't go any further. I want you to know you were created with purpose and I need you to find. That's why I asked the question, why were you created? Why do you believe God created you? Now, let me just say this, y'all. This is, and I get it's an evolving process. It's ebb and flow. I get all that. But at some point in your life, you ought to know what yeah, you're here to do. Something. Yeah. yeah. Some kind of I mean, idea. I mean, people, you know, I tell people all the time, particularly those younger adults who give, when you're in your 20s, that's when you're trying to finish your education and position yourself for life. So that's, mm -hmm. I'm going to graduate high school. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to go to trade school. I'm going to go get my master's. The 20s, that's a time I call it of development. So right. I'm trying to develop myself, position myself to be marketable out here in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 20s, if you ain't married by 23, shut up, hush, go sit down somewhere and it's go okay. back. Because you got people in their 20s now. Oh, I ain't got nobody. I want to be... 20s, I believe. You're still you, finding yourself. Don't develop. If I can tell people in their 20s, don't get married. Don't be trying to settle down right now. Uh, he might, I get love and relationships, but mm -hmm. that's you trying to find yourself. 30s now, I have my degree. I have my trade. I've gone and got my certificate or whatever, because everybody don't go to college. Right, right. And, and, and that's fine. <clears throat> 30s now, I'm out here looking for job. I'm out here marketing myself. Come on. Maybe I'm now ready to, to look at a relationship because I ain't got to compete with school and compete with this and compete with that. And, and some of you who are single parents, you're trying to do all of it. But, but listen, y'all, at some point, when I think in your 30s, man, you should be at a place of just kind of knowing. And again, kind of that's you're kind of getting your feet on the track. On the track. Get on the track. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying you're going to see the full picture, but at least get on the track. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the first point, y'all. You have purpose. Here's a prayer that I want to pray over this room. Father, right now, I pray that you will release revelation yes. as to what you called us to do. Yes. God, please reveal the good thing that you have destined us to do. God, we no longer want to walk waywardly. We no longer want to walk aimlessly, yes. but we want to know our purpose. God, whether it's in a dream, whether it's confirmation through a family member, a co-worker or a friend, confirm it in the earth, God, yes, what Lord. you have called us to do. No more coming off the ladder. No more compromise yes, as it relates to my purpose and my destiny. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. amen. Hallelujah. And amen. We speak that over your life today. All right. How many lives do we have, Sheree? 214. 214. Let's go to the next point. Purpose. Here's the next point. And I'm, I'm going to let you talk about this one, Sheree. We have to make the right choices. All right. And then you want to read the scripture? Yeah, let me get it up. Here, I got right. it. Choices. Okay. Priorities <laughs> deal with knowing my purpose. Priorities also deal with priorities, all right? Um, Genesis chapter two, right? Mm -hmm. Here it is on the screen. Okay, let me read it, Sheree. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to <laughs> work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, Come on. you will certainly die. Yes. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. 
<laughs> All right. So if we're going to uh, master our priorities, you, we've got to make the right choices. And so um, when we're clear about our individual purpose, then we understand we ought to dedicate our time and resources, which are uh, limited to pursue our purpose. So that's why we, we just said a minute ago, when you don't know your purpose, you don't, you don't even know what to choose. That's good. That's the point. Right. You don't even, you don't know what to choose. And so it's incumbent upon us. So that's why you got to do stuff in order. Find out what your purpose is and then start making choices that will lead you to that place and, and don't allow. So once you decide what, what I, what it takes for me to get there, then you start putting things in place, um, choosing things that will best get you to that, that said place but not allowing other things and other people to distract you and pull you away. Once you have chosen what it is that you're going to do, stick to it. Right. Um, That's good. Stop, so it's like you make a choice, but then you're like, oh, well, I'm, but I'm going to go do this right quick. No, you're choosing to, to make, first of all, choose to head towards your purpose. Choose Come to on. operate in your purpose. And then the things you put in place, that, so if, if, if um, I don't know, maybe maybe what your purpose is in this moment calls for you to uh, do a conference or whatever. So right. that means you're going to have to put, start putting some money back, right? Come on. This, this Come is on. Just, a, just a typical, very practical thing. So that means I can't keep going to Amazon. I can't. I got to choose. I can't keep ordering clothes off of the off of the internet. Can't keep going shopping. I can't mm -hmm. keep going out to eat every time. Why? Because I, I know my purpose in this season and I got to accomplish something. It's going to cost some money. But And watch this. I believe that as God sees us being diligent, then he'll, on, he'll place people in our path to help finance. That's so good. Whatever so it is good. he's called us to do. But he's got to know he can trust us to make the right choices. What's the quote? If it's somebody, his will, he'll pay the bill, something like that? It's, what? It, yeah, if it's his... Oh, man, how his is... His will, it? his bill. If he his called will, it, his, his bill. bill. He'll take care of you if he called you to it. If he gives vision, he'll give provision. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But I heard that if it's his will, it's his bill, too. But he's got to know he can trust you to make the right choices because he's not going to allow somebody to come in and finance and then you take the money and go buy you a new car. That's so good, Sheree. See what I'm saying? So choices. we've got to make the right choices um, to do what we're supposed to do. And I, I want to say, I can't remember who I heard say this, that we've got to not make our, um, you can't forsake the ultimate or how, how is it? Trade the ultimate for like the temporary or the, temporary. the immediate. You can't trade the ultimate, the ultimate thing that God wants to do in you and through you for the immediate. Like you dropping and you making bad choices to satisfy immediate gratifications for your life. You got to look down to what's my purpose. Come on. And you got to make choices for the ultimate and not the immediate, y'all. That's good. Sure. That makes sense? Absolutely it does. So here's, here's the question, the must versus the must not. The must versus the must not. And let's add this because I don't want some of your must nots are just for now. For now. Come on. You, you can eventually get back to them. But where I'm trying to go right now, I can't do this. I got to put this over here and then later on. As things forget, because I told you priorities are gonna always be shifting. Yes. But right now, I can't do this in this season of my life. So I'm gonna have to put this on over here and concentrate on these choices. Priorities. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture, I, and I gave this to Greater Life. Um Matthew 6 33. Come on. Uh, I want y'all to, um, uh, I want y'all to type this in. Order, object, outcome. Order, 
object outcome. I hope this bless your life. But seek ye first order. Come on. Priority. The kingdom of God. Y'all, let me say this. Nothing in our purpose, no good thing that's been designed for us will ever separate us from the things of God. That's prayer. That's getting in your word. Uh -huh. That's finding a group to be a part of. That's going to corporate worship. And listen, some of us cannot make it past where we are because we're out of order. Seek ye first, not your education. Seek ye first, not trying, no, the kingdom. In other words, Sheree, when I seek the things of God, Notice order first. first. Yeah. Notice the first. object. What am I seeking? The kingdom. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. So in fellowship with my purpose, it's the things of God. It's the will of God. It's the mind of God. It's the ways of God. There you go. Y'all, let me say this. You cannot elevate and move ahead apart from being in the will of God, the yeah. things of God, and walking in the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what we get when we do that. Right order, right object, we'll get the right outcome. And all these things will be added unto you. Let me tell y'all this. Here's what we want, y'all. <clears throat> we want the outcome without the order. Come on. Yes, sir. We want the outcome without focusing on the right object. Mm -hmm. See, we want to we want to skirt around God and skirt around the things of God and think we're going to get to a good place. Y'all, it don't work that way. Mm -hmm. Temporary satisfaction. Let me tell y'all this. This is why I want y'all to hear me closely, and, and and because I teach it and I believe it. The devil is the god of this world. He knows how to give you stuff. Come on now. That looks like God. Everything people are walking in, driving in, it may not be God. That part. Satan will bait you with stuff. He took Jesus to a mountain. You can have all these. Come the on. God of the world. You can have all these things. Just cast yourself down. Your angels will catch you. Just do. He can present you stuff. Mm-hmm. But here's what I want, Sheree. When I'm walking with God and doing it God's way, I know that every good and perfect gift is coming from above. Yes, sir. Y'all get in order. That's so good. Focus on the right object. And listen, your outcome has to work together for your good. That's so good. That's where I'm at in my life, y'all. I ain't compromising for nobody. I ain't got to kiss nobody behind. I ain't got to run up behind nobody. I ain't got to change who I am. Keep going in the phone booth. Change <laughs> the phone booth. Keep going. Let me take this off. They don't like me in this. They don't like me to say that. Be who you are. Follow God and watch what he does with your life. Yes, yes, yes. Seek him. We, we want it quick and easy. But and so I always say we want God's results without doing it God's way. How that work? Can you repeat that? If you want God's results, you got to do it God's way. It ain't gonna come out. It, no, it ain't gonna work no other way. And so that's why when that scripture says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God," like Pastor Nate said, that means God's way of doing things. Gotta Seek that different. priority. Yep. Come on, yeah. come on. Seek that, and then. And his righteousness, then when you do that, then all these things, all everything that's necessary is going to be added to you. Yeah. Where's God on your priority list, y'all? Because ain't no way we're going to get through this lesson this week if God ain't in his rightful oh. place. Yeah, he needs to be. He needs to be your priority. Who, Sheree? I don't want it. This may end the show right here. I think we got to go. We're going to finish tomorrow. Let me Let me end the show right here. Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that yeah. King Uzziah died, uh -huh. I saw the Lord. When he died. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, 
it mm. cannot yield fruit. Y'all, you know what I've learned? I can see God better. <laughs> I feel my help coming. When some stuff around me dies. Ooh, we. Sheree, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to walk out of the room real quietly. But I'm gonna be <laughs> honest, y'all. Y'all can judge me, look at me crazy if you want to. There had that I there was some stuff in my life that needed to die. Come on, Nate. To produce better vision in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people had to go. As much as I wanted them to stay, they had to go. And the year that they departed, I saw the Lord. And that could be physical death or just removing them out of your life. Yeah. We're not just talking about dead, gone, no, in the no. grave. No. There are some habits that will die and you'll start seeing better. My, my, my. But when you keep stuff alive that's pumping oxygen into your demise, there's some people who are just pumping oxygen into your depression, <laughs> pumping oxygen into your stress levels. All they do is pump Ooh, oxygen. Keep it alive. <laughs> but when they die, when it dies, you're going to see better. Any, any final thoughts, Sheree? Listen, who needs to die in your life? Not just physically. This is the question. What needs to die? Who and what? Because who that, or what? That life. Right. What, what's the quote, Sheree? Uh, <laughs> some of us, it's dead, but you're giving CPR to dead things. You keep going to resuscitate. Come on, just one more time. One more time, please. This is it. Last time. Last time. Last time. Mm -mm. Last time. Mm -mm. God trying to kill it. You keep running over there to resuscitate it. Unplug the ventilator. Come on here, girl. Come on, Rebecca. Come on here. Oh, Yolanda. <sighs> just pay. Okay, this is the last time. This is the last. I promise. God, I promise. I ain't going to mess with it. No more after this. And we're giving CPR to things that ought to be dead. Y'all, I know you think that you can't live without it or them, but guess what? Come on. God can do far greater. Some things and some people will, they got to be eliminated. Priorities, y'all. It's all dealing with priority. So I got to know my purpose. I got to make the right choices. And then going to give them three and four. Because I ain't going to try it. Tomorrow going to be a different day. Here's three. We ain't going to stay here long. But here's, here's point three. This is what we were going to give you. Right in Missouri, say, faith room just blessed my life. I must die out to some things. He says, confirmation. That's right in Missouri. We got to walk in wisdom, y'all. Mama said it like this. You know better, you do better. Mom said, mom said it that way. Son, when you know better, boy, you ought to do better. When you get the knowledge of something, that's what wisdom is. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Y'all, it's time to walk in wisdom. Yeah. Yes. Here's what Sheree and I say every single week. I, and I'm a pastor. I know it's, It hurts my heart to give good word and people don't make application to it. Come on, Lord have mercy. You give you give good word, you give the the revelation of God, the low hey, God. Hallelujah, clap it, amen, hallelujah, come on. Room, and and y'all, and we don't put it to practice. That part. That, 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 that's, that's the hard part of, 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 of preaching every week, that you're giving the word, but people, and, and here's what they do. They'll shout, they'll run, they'll dance. <laughs> and lead that word, sitting in the sanctuary. <sighs> Wisdom, Cherie. Yeah. Is knowledge applied. That's it. Properly. 
That's it. I got to be wise in this season. Wisdom and discernment go hand in hand. I got God, give me discernment. Help me. And guess what? If any man lack wisdom. Come on. The Bible says. God will give it to you. Mm -hmm. KJ said dirty dancing. <laughs> Ain't planning on doing nothing you said. Here's another scripture. Teach us to number our days. Talk about that. That we may gain a heart of wisdom. Y'all, again, we say it every time we come on here. And what's the what's the words that in the old saints time that has been won't be no more. Come on. So you need to get going and start applying your heart to wisdom and forget all the stupid stuff and stuff that don't matter right now. So you can get accomplished what you're supposed to be getting accomplished. That's so good. Ask God for wisdom. That's so good. Wisdom. All and right. here's the last point, y'all, as we go. You got to be disciplined and self-control minded. Nothing happens with, listen, y'all, sticking to my priority list. Come on. You got to be disciplined. It's got, and discipline, y'all, takes practice. Yeah. You got to start Absolutely. and keep going and keep going and keep going. Discipline. Mm -hmm. Self-control. Can you talk about self-control, Sheree? Under control? That, that I, I mean, self-control means I'm applying discipline. I'm not wilding out. I'm not starting doing everything I, I want to do. And as far as we're concerned, well, I guess you could apply it to that. I mean, everyday life. A lot of people like to talk about working out, but if I'm disciplined to do it, and if I have self control, well, if I'm disciplined, that that means whatever. If it's cold outside, if it's hot, if it's not outside, if I feel like getting up or not, I'm because I'm disciplined, and I've disciplined myself to do it. Then I'm going to do it no matter what, because I really do understand the why. Yeah. And but if I don't have no self control, I'm gonna let my flesh dictate to me. Oh, I don't feel like it. I stayed out. I was up late last night, so I ain't getting up. Or oh, it's too cold out there. I ain't going because I got no. I don't control myself. Myself is controlling me. That's so good. You see what I'm saying? So that's so that's good. that's the difference. Um, and even for some, I don't know. I know a lot of churches are on fast right now. That's a fasting is a discipline. Yeah. So you have to discipline yourself and gain control over yourself or over your flesh that whatever that thing is that you're fasting from, that you're abstaining from, that you don't let your flesh dictate what you're going to. If you say for me, coffee, I'm not having coffee. So when here's what I do when I feel those urges, get the Bible. Let me let me start praying. Let me start reading. Every time the enemy tries to come and make me say, you know you want it, you know you want it. this. That's going to be my cue to pray. That's my cue to read. So I'm controlling. My, my flesh good. don't dictate to me what I can and cannot do or what I will and won't do. That's and so, so you have to have the same mindset in life. If there, if when I, because I know my purpose and I have uh, made right choices, now I have to put some things in order. I got the wisdom to get it done. That that even means, Nate, surrounding yourself with people of wisdom. Yep. Allowing people to speak into your life. You don't know everything. Um, and so once you obtain that wisdom, now you got to apply it. And now discipline yourself. Discipline your flesh. Discipline your mind to get it done. It might cause you to get up early mornings. Or you may have to stay up late. But you got to put the work in and discipline yourself to do it. Take the stairs. Get off that escalator. <laughs> Whatever it is. One floor. You on the first floor. Of the, you on the second floor of the hotel. The elevator. Take it long. You gonna wait on that thing. Go on and take them stairs. Cause listen, hard work, discipline. It pays off. I think your vet, the therapist in here, said discipline and self con self control equals freedom. Mm. I like that. Yeah, this, this, because now you've it's it's a sense of accomplishment. Because I really can, I really can tell my flesh what I'm not gonna do. 
and you don't run me. You can do that. And it's a good feeling. I, I like that, event. I like that. This is a foundational lesson. If we get the foundation right, we can build on it and we'll be able to stand. Y'all know what Sheree and I do. We ain't just going to come in here now and start talking about no story in the Bible without laying the foundation. Because what good is telling you about if you ain't, you know, if you don't know your purpose? Correct. If you ain't making the right choices. If you're not walking in wisdom. If you're not disciplined in self-control. Y'all, you can have a priority list all day. It'll, it'll never be accomplished. So this is a great beginning. Tomorrow we'll come back. We'll get going with just some biblical pictures of this lesson. So we're going to put feet and hands to the lesson. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts, Sheree? I think it was a great lesson today, sis. Great day. I can't wait to see what the rest of the week holds. Yeah. Y'all be encouraged. We love you. Uh, enjoy your life. Enjoy your day. Listen, um, the prayer of serenity, y'all, is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Help me to do what? Uh, I, I like it. We used to put it up back in the day. Long uh, you, time. Yeah, we used to do that in here. Um, let me pull it up and uh, I, I feel led to just close with that today. The serenity prayer. What's up, Rich? Great, great session, man. Uh, the it. serenity prayer. Um, I have it. You want to read it, Sheree? Thank you, God. Is this it? Oh, God and Heavenly Father, grant to us the serenity of mind to accept that which cannot be changed. Courage to change that that which can be changed, and wisdom to know the one from the other. That's Jesus it. Christ. Grant me the That's serenity it. to accept the things I cannot change. Accept what I can't change. That's good. Then courage to change the things I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's good. That's good. Listen, everybody, we love you. I need. Everybody, if you believe in us, we are four months away from this conference. Yes. I need you to sow into it. Dollar sign of faith room one. Every seed you get will go to this conference. Every seed you give will go to this conference. Pastor Nate ain't going to be able to make it, but you can sow into it. Pastor, they ain't going to be able to make it, but I want to sponsor somebody. Put in the comments, sponsor ticket. But if you believe in this platform, mm -hmm. help us make sure that this conference won't put no stress on us. Because we ain't going to stress. But we're doing this because it's the will of God for our life. It's the good thing that he's purposed for us. So help us, y'all. Help us. Any amount you want to give toward the meet up, make it happen. Y'all get ready. That's going to be the message because um, it costs. Y'all vision cost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we're not putting together some, you know, throw it against the wall and see, you know, we put a lot of time. Uh -uh. We've been up at night. We've been tossing, texting all in the, the topics and speakers and who could do this and what we venue. and uh, Y'all listen, it ain't no joke. Uh, it look easy. We may come in here smiling. Gee, 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 gee. But <laughs> if only oh, you knew. <laughs> That's why we be getting these days out. Y'all don't have a clue. Uh, but anyway, let's pray out. Y'all have a great Tuesday. Father, we love you <clears throat> yes, as sir. we leave this space of growth and encouragement be with us today lord i pray for protection over the faith room thank you for everybody thank you lord in this space today we love you and we thank you in jesus name amen amen have a good day all right and we call our kamani in the name of jesus in the name God. of jesus in her mind and her heart you know what to do, Father. So we trust you in that in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Peace out. Bye. Like.